Hello, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. I'm here at Sandy Pines Campground in Kitty Bunkport, Maine. And I was camping here with my Airstream for a couple days and I bumped into an owner of a happier camper. If uh, no one's familiar with this manufacturer, they are small manufacturer out of California and they handcraft these trailers one by one at their manufacturing plant and the owner is allowing me to give you guys a tour today inside and out of this trailer uh, focusing on the details on how uh, the trailer is laid out and some of the components they use as well. So this is a model year 2019 and it's the model HC1 and it is 13 foot from the center of the ball to the back of the trailer and the body which is a fiberglass body which is a interior and exterior shell there's two shells with insulation in between it is 10 foot and the ceiling height is about six foot one it has a GVWR of 3500 pounds so it has a 3500 pound axle system and it has 13 inch rims and tires. It has a manual hitch jack up front. And uh, this, once you hook the trailer, which is two inch ball, onto your tow vehicle, uh, you could then swing this hitch jack up on its side and the wheel would be that way. Uh, so you could travel down the highway. Some of the unique features before we head inside on this trailer is that they give you some accessories here on the front hitch area. There's a regular hitch receiver port and that will allow you to slide anything in that will stink, go into a standard two inch hitch receiver. It has a miniature propane tank here as well. And that is for the Trumer heater on board. And because of the weight of this trailer, it has electric brakes. So your vehicle would need an electric brake controller. It has manual stabilizer jacks, all four corners. It has a steel frame. There's a manufacturer's logo. I'll link to them in the description. It has a tempered glass front window and it has a snap-in rock shield that goes over it. And once you commit to the purchase of the shell, then you could add lots of options. One of them being a solar panel on the roof. Another one is a rooftop air conditioner. That is an AC 120 volt air conditioning. Another option they have is an awning. So it's a manual awning that will cover your patio area. Instead of a standard RV entry step, they gave you another hitch receiver. And then you could slide in any accessory, like a step, like to get in the back of a pickup truck, right into it. So that's a very clever idea. And there's LED running lights on the side that are own unique hinges and door catch. Same thing up top here. It's got a porthole window and the entry door and I'll show you a unique way to give yourself some privacy inside. Outside patio light. And then it has this bar option here. And it hooks onto a bracket and you could adjust the angle and the height of it and then the shelf itself slips into a rail that allows you to hook it on and the unique thing about that is now you have an outside kitchen so this is a tinted safety glass window there's a privacy shade here and then there's also an insect screen that you could roll down and it snaps in behind here has some props here to keep the window open but it really opens up the inside allows you a pass through so you can entertain 
outside as well. And uh, before we head inside, I want to show you another feature that there is. It has a rear hatch. Now that rear hatch will uh, give you a lot of flexibility. It allows you to load cargo in the back. Has an insect screen here that zips up. You can get all the way inside from here and it snaps in nice and tight so the bugs don't get in. And then below it has another hitch receiver, so if you wanted to do a rear bike rack, you could do so, or another step to get in and out. LED tail lights. And the same thing as a front window, you could put the little snap covers on the outside. So you integrate these little snaps into the fiberglass work. You could cover that. So inside it, it features adaptive, flexible space. And what that is, is these little cubes. So you could order the trailer and then you could order all different types of cubes and all the cubes are module and you could snap them in and put them in all different places they're all loose so each one of them has a cushion on top and then each one of them has storage and they're just rotocast cubes so you could remove this one you could stack this one on top of that one and this is a kitchen counter and you could get up to counter height if you wish or you could keep it low then each one of these carpet pieces has plastic molded into the bottom that sits in these little grooves. Okay, and I'll allow you to change these all around. So it's like a little puzzle. Over here by the door, there's uh, USB charge ports and electrical outlet. So right now we're plugged into shore power at the campground. So we have electricity going to the outlets in the trailer, as well as we're able to run the rooftop air conditioner. There's an insect screen here at the door which zips around to fill this void here. Nice step well on the bottom. And then it shows you your carrying capacity. So each trailer is in a way something different because they're all configured differently. But this one has a DVWR a 3,500 pounds and they're giving you 1,200 pounds of cargo you could put inside. So that one means this one weighs 2,300 pounds before you add your own personal items. The base weight of the trailer is around 1,200 pounds but then once you option it out you'll have to add for the weight. And here's all the dimensions here. A really nice manual the way they laid it out but the width, the height, where all the connections are. Lots of really cool information. It's cute. Now they have, do have other models now. They have larger models with wet baths inside, but this is the HC1. They have an HCT trailer, which is more their traveler. And you can see it's fully finished fiberglass on the inside. And this is not the exterior shell, there's a shell within a shell. This front blind will go up, gives you access to the view outside. Over here by the door is the optional ZAMP solar charge controller for the optional solar panel on the roof. That will charge your battery when you're not plugged into electricity. And then you have ceiling light control here. And then each one of these uh, little lights over the cabinet, you can dim them, you can make them brighter, and then you can tap each one off as you're done using it. There's little clothes hangers here that flip down. There's one here. And there's another one on the bar side. This is the insect screen we saw from outside in its rolled up position. You can see the hardware they have for the blind system. 
very nicely done. Pretty hot day, and I don't smell any off gassing in here. So that's important when people are shopping for trailers about the off gassing. These are bifold cushions. This gives you access to the controls for the Truma heat. That's a propane heating system. There's heat ducts here as well. This is where the wheel well cuts in. And then the dining tables that come with it have pedestals that are built into the floor. And the table leg unscrews and the table top pops off. But when you remove the top and you remove the leg, you can lay the tabletops on this edge. And you could fill the void with these extra cushions and make this into one large bed. You could actually pretty much make the whole entire trailer into one bed if you wanted to. Or you could remove the back cubes, all those are separate cubes, and you could load cargo into the back. So you do have to be mindful of the weight that you've added if you are loading cargo, especially when it comes to axle and tongue weight so you don't have any trailer sway. The upper cabinets are molded right into the body. So this is all one piece transition for the cabinets. And by the way, she did give me permission to go through the trailer and go through everything. Just so you could see how she has things laid out. It's a plywood door, laminate, latch, hinges here in the back. Another one here. And the uh, cabinets actually have grip inside of them. Like a texture that prevents things from sliding around. And the air conditioner is an optional heat too, so it's an electric heat that you could utilize if you're plugged into electricity. Instead of using a Truma heating system, you could use that instead. And then she has a, a Daewoo microwave here on the bottom that she removes and uses. And then this cushion comes up and you have another tabletop you could remove out. So that's just a cushion cover. And then it gives you access, when you do get the optional indoor kitchen, there's some prep underneath some of these that if you decided to add city water, they have the prep space to run that in. Possibly a holding tank there. There's another USB, another electrical here. So very well thought out. And then underneath this front area is more storage molded in. And then the battery charger is all the way up front behind this cube here. That would most likely be where all your fuses and breakers are. But for an interior space of approximately 10 by 6, pretty spacious. I'm used to being in a lot of vans and I'm 5'9". There's plenty of headroom above my head. Check out the little reading lights there that are directional. You can move around. And then this is uh, how you can see out. And when you want privacy, close that. And then in the door, there's a pocket. And they give you this nice pouch. You can organize all your belongings. Door's got a thick gasket on it. Look how thick the fiberglass is for the entry door. And it closes nice and tight. Step around the other side. This is a standard electrical connection. Power cord. Goes right into the campground's electrical connection. She's utilizing two of them. And those are your standard 30 or 50 amp campground connection. This trailer only needs 20 amps. It looks like the other cord is going to the outdoor screen enclosure, which up here in Maine in, the, in August, uh, lots of insects, so it's uh, nice to have a structure you can get away from them. This is the outside 
Zamp quick disconnect port. If you got a portable solar panel, you could plug it in right there. That's the vent for the battery. This is a prep for a great tank drain. Underneath, you can see it's a steel frame, all fiberglass, but then the sides are all nicely gel coated. The rubber torsion axle. This has 175, 80, 13 rims. So you're being mindful and using the wheel chock so it doesn't roll down this embankment. That's one really nice thing about Sandy Pines Campground is the sites are mostly level. They spent a lot of time on the infrastructure here really prepping the site to make sure they're as close to level as possible. So I, I do give them props for that. And check out this jealousy window here on the side. So there's lots of options you could get. I believe now base MSRP or base price is in the mid 30s. So you definitely want to check out their website if you're interested in pricing one of these out. Well, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I love it. And we'll see you soon.